Hey guys, so this is called a the Blue Jacket Project. You will find it in the photo edit folder along with the Lombard Street. So what you want to do is you want to open up this file, which is a newer JPEG file. The file format is called JPF. You want to just drag that into your Photoshop. If you want to know what the final edit looks like, this is the Photoshop file here. And later on, you will need to import this frame in here to kind of add an accent frame uh, to the final image. So here we go. So I brought the JPF file in, and I'm going to make a copy of that layer because I don't want to really destroy the original. And then you can see here on this photograph, this is a trip that we've, we've taken with a Harvard College architecture student, boy, long, long ago. And we're coming down Lombard Street. So I took this photo, and this is our other instructor, Scott Callahan. This is Sergio Pedroza, and this is Chris, and then we don't know these people up here. So we want to actually kind of focus on this frame right here, but we don't want to see the colorful jacket back here and all these other people. Um, and then we don't want, maybe we want to get rid of this camera because it just looks a little bit weird, and maybe get rid of this pole. So let's get into editing. So I'm going to zoom in here and let's first get rid of this pole. And we're going to use that healing brush tool. Spot healing brush is what I like to use. I guess as a shortcut is J. And I'm going to increase my brush and kind of go like that. And there it is. It's gone. Maybe I can do the whole thing here. Man, Photoshop is amazing. Let me get in here a little bit and somewhat that. Oop, that. Okay, so that was pretty easy. I'm gonna come in here. I'm gonna get rid of this uh, pole, but it's going into Scott's head. So I'm gonna see what Photoshop will do with that. Let's see. The algorithm is okay. It's not great. We'll, we'll, we will make this brush so that Photoshop can get a bigger sample. Not bad. It's okay, but it's picking up some of his red. So I think I'm going to go down to the clone stamp tool and just kind of go old school here. Where is my clone stamp? There it is. S is my clone stamp. So I'm going to get take some of this brush and bring it down here. Take some of that brush, bring it down here. Oh, my opacity is a very faint copy, so I want to bring it to 100%. And you know, maybe I want to I want to be careful and not select over uh, Scott's hair and all of that. So maybe I'll just spend the time to do some selection here um, so I'm just isolating the area where I don't really want to get into Scott's hair and go back to my S which is my clone stamp reduce the come back in just kind of put some of that tree or that brush and get rid of this colorful man there there we go deselect and there we go so it doesn't look too bad I'm gonna go ahead and fix all of this up here for you guys right now so let's just go back to our selection tool and you know like I said the key is really doing a good selection so I'm gonna kind of select this whole area there then take away some of the selection and again I'm gonna blur a lot of this stuff out so I don't have to be perfect yeah I think I'm okay with that and then I'm going back to type S for my st uh, cl um, stamp clone tool and I'm just gonna extend this or extend. Get rid of this lady there. And cover that up with the brush. I think. All right, 
I think that's good. You know, it looks okay. Kind of. Let me get rid of this uh, here. I think that's going to be a little bit tougher because I don't have a whole lot of samples to work with. Again, I want to... Actually, I should be careful and select around around the area that I want to edit so that I don't cut into my foreground here. So that's not bad. Yep, that's pretty good. To my stamp tool. I'm, I typed S, by the way, for the stamp tool. In case you're wondering what I'm clicking. And I know the texture's not perfect, but you know what? I'm just going to live with it. Here, let's try the um, healing brush and see what that does. Oh, not the healing brush, sorry. The spot healing, J. Ooh, I don't know. Nope, it really doesn't know what it is. So I'm going to have to go back to the stamp tool. And again, I am not going to try to be perfect here because I am going to be deleting. I'm going to take some of this gray because I'm getting a lot of that black bar there. Ooh, that's looking pretty nasty. Um... So anyway, you guys don't have to be so picky like me right now. You know, just uh, obviously this is just introduction. So I don't want to make this like a super high end photo editing exercise. So let's just kind of be very um, crude and, and rough. I just need you guys to get the feel for all the tools. Let me just get rid of this yellow. It's kind of annoying. I'm going to blow out some of the chrome at the same time. Forget it. Oops. So I'm holding down the shift bar, by the way, or the space bar to kind of pan my image. You guys are going to want to learn how to do that. Oops. And then hold down Alt to sample from different parts of the image. There we go. Just get rid of all of that red. Of that bar. All right, so it's it's gone. The 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 person is gone, and I think that was the jeans of the lady that was behind. But I'm just gonna leave that, and like some peeping tom over here. So <laughs> let me go to um, J, which is the. Let's see what that does. Oh wait, because I have this thing selected. Yep, I have to deselect first, guys. Because uh, it was only, wow, that wasn't bad. But you see how it just kind of destroyed all of that um, brush. So I'm going to come back in with the stamp tool and just kind of bring that brush back a little bit. But yeah, that healing spot healing tool is pretty amazing. Uh, there's another peeping tom. All right, I'm going to grab that there. Gone. All right, so this edit looks pretty decent. So I'm going to just now use that as my new base and kind of do some additional editing. You know, very similar to that Lombard Street project. By the way, this is also in the same day that we took the photo on Lombard Street in San Francisco. Um, I will actually make a copy. And you know, depending on what I'm feeling that day, I may use different techniques. I mean, there's so many different ways of achieving kind of very similar look. But I'm going to go ahead and convert that into a black and white. So uh, I like to, you know, maybe use a channel mixer. Um, and in general, what I'm looking for is like the darkest of the, of the black. 
and then also try to bring out the lightest in the image. So basically pull most of these slider to the right and then pull this. Obviously that'll make it all black, right? Super contrasty. So, you know, you'll just get a feel for it and figure out what your kind of tolerance for pushing these limits are. And then once I do that, you know, just by doing that, that black and white, I guess, and then I have the color image behind it, by blending these, blending this black and white with the color really gives it a, like a really cool pastel, surreal kind of finish to it. You know, and it's a pretty simple edit. You know, you have that versus, let me, you know, that, right? So that would be the original photograph I've, I, I've taken that particular day. I take away some other things that I don't want to see, maybe even this light pole, but forget it. And then I overlay a super contrasty kind of monochromatic photo on top of it. Maybe I pushed it a little bit too hard. And if that's the case, you can take this particular layer. So this layer is multiplying to the layer below it. You can take this multiplied layer and kind of reduce the opacity. And it kind of reduces the, the edginess, right? So it all depends on how hard you want to push this particular image. And then let's come down here. You can take this uh, blue jacket frame, which is already a pre-done Photoshop frame for this particular size. I can bring it in here and then it pops right on top. So double click that. So it kind of looks like an old school um, post-production, you know, like a frame, negative frame. Um, and then let's just uh, put some text down here. Um, so we'll add some text to it for the final touch up. So if, um, if you look at like old school negatives, they'll usually have something like this, you know, like a little text with, you know, the negative, the ISO, ISO speed and, you know, all this other stuff. And it just adds, I think we'll actually add a nice texture to it. So this is a type of film, Kodak Ektar. Uh, I think this is ISO 100 or something like that. So let's just add that text to it. So you come down here to this text tool here and then um, click anywhere on the screen. And then you'll notice that you'll get a brand new layer for text, right? So you double click on that. And then you're going to just type, let's say, caps codec. Space, space, space. Guitar, space, space. You know, or you can put your title or whatever you want, but you know, so you can do something like that. If you want to get really cute, you can put some white boxes on this so it looks like a, you know, frame or something like that. But oh, wait a minute, we forgot to fix um, the the camera. So again, you're going to go back to the layer that you want to fix. If, if all of this, you know, post-production edit this, uh, bothers you, just go ahead and drag, click and drag the eyeball and you, it'll, it'll all disappear. And I think this will, hopefully the healing brush tool will work. Oh, I haven't selected anything good. So... You know what? Now I'm going to just kind of go old school. So anyway, healing brush tool is the shortcut is J. Oops. Hey guys, I came back. Uh, I had to do a quick research. I noticed that my brush size wasn't um, showing. And so when I was doing the healing brush, the brush was super big. And um, I did a quick search and all these new shortcut functions came in but I have my caps lock on you remember when I was typing the Kodak Ektar 100 and so if you're if you have your cap lock lock on you get this precision cursor but if you hit hit cap lock off you will actually see your brush so just in case uh, you guys panic because you guys lost the image yeah no that's not great I'm gonna go back to my stamp tool my good old trusty old school tr stamp tool and come in here. Oops. 
and again, I am kind of editing, you know, I'm pushing the images pretty hard during the post-production, so I'm not going to really be very picky about like whether it's perfect, whether it's from his lapel, you know, I'm just going to try to do the best I can, but I'm not going to lose sleep over it, really. And then let's just kind of frame out his jacket and then take some of his gray shirt and bring the gray shirt back. Get some gray from the bottom. You want to try to get the, uh, you want to try to sample it from nearby so that it doesn't, you know, the colors and the, and the tone and the lighting is as close as possible. So I'm holding down the alt, by the way, to just try to sample from different parts, letting it go. And I'm trying not to get down to his fingers and lose his fingers, right, obviously. Oop, that's too light. Get some of this darker. And let me just zoom in here. And then the brackets will allow you to um, reduce the size of your, your brush. So again, don't forget about that cap lock thing. It kind of threw me for a loop um, during the demo. Okay, and this strap is still there. I believe the healing brush tool will work here pretty decently, maybe. I don't know if Photoshop will find a difference, so let's see. Yeah, not bad. Not good, but It'll work for me at the moment. Oh, that was horrible. I lost all of his lapel. Come down here. We take some of that lapel and do that. You know, there's some highlight on that shirt, so I'm just going to keep keep those other highlights in there just to define his lapel, jacket lapel. And not bad. This is not necessarily good. It looks like he has a stain on his shirt. Uh, let's get rid of some of that. All right. I think that's okay. Yeah, you know, we're looking at it like that, right? So it's all good. It looks like he's holding his shirt. <laughs> oh gosh, that looks horrible, guys. All right, let, let's do something. Let's bring this paint on his jacket. So after you take this class, guys, never believe anything that you see on the internet. It is all editable. And I think it looks like he's holding his stomach and is hurting because of this deep shadow line. And this is kind of where, if you've taken art classes before, you'll kind of understand. But his fingers are digging in pretty good there, so... I don't know. It might be a lost cause here at this point. Just trying to get rid of some of these um, creases so that it doesn't look like he's digging into his stomach. See? Alright, a little better. A little better. Okay, so there you go. Uh, I don't think I'm going to be monkeying around with this that much longer. Ooh, okay. That's because this guy still has his camera and all that stuff. So let's just do that again. We're going to delete that layer. We're going to copy this layer that's been edited. So that's good. Making a series of mistakes here and, you know, kind of figuring out what to do. Uh, what did we do? We went to image, adjust... I think we did the channel mixer. I mean, you could just do desaturate, but I like the channel mixer because it gives me a little bit more control. 
we want to push it out as a monochrome, meaning just a black and white. You know, we'll bring out a lot of the whites or the highlights and then bring back some of the dark, kind of like that. Yeah, let's push it. And then we're going to blend that. We're going to multiply that layer to the layer below it. So there you go. Yeah. And then, of course, you can reduce the opacity if it's too dark for you. And But it's all good. Hopefully you guys get my, um, you know, the gist of the uh, the lesson. We'll see you guys on the next demo.